So in this video, we're going to be determining the critical path of a project that has multiple initial activities. We're going to go through the forward pass to find the early start and early finish. We're going to do the backward pass to find the late finish and late start. And then we're going to determine what is the critical path and the project duration, all based off of just this table of dependencies that we have here. So the best way to do this is to first start with a really rough sketch of the predecessor relationships before we move on to drawing a more proper and clean network diagram. So when we look at here activities A, B, and C here, we see all of those have no predecessors. So we're just gonna write those, we're gonna basically line them up A, B, and C on the left side, kind of stacked on top of each other. There's nothing that comes before those. And then we're gonna move on to the next one, activity D. So we see activity D here, it depends on A, so it has to finish after D. Uh, sorry, D has to finish after A, so just draw an arrow coming out of A to D. Next, when we look at activity E, it depends on A and B. So A and B both have to go into this activity, so just kind of roughly guess where a good place to put it would be. Um, just like that, A and B are leading into it. That seems like a fine place. Um, activity F here, depends on B and C. So again, B and C, there's gonna to have to be some arrows coming out and it's going to an activity that we're calling activity F. All good so far. Looking at activity G, it depends on D, E, and F. So we need to somewhere that we can reach with all arrows from all of these guys. So that would be a good spot right there. So D, E, and F are all leading into activity G. Activity H only depends on activity F. So we just need to, uh, we just need H over here with an arrow coming from F. That's a fine spot. And then activity I here depends on G and H. So we can put it over here at the end. And G and H are going to lead into it. So I would always recommend doing it this way, one at a time. Just start with your initial activities. If there's more than one, just put them all on the left-hand side. And then just like slowly go. If you find that you have arrows crossing over, then maybe try reorganizing a little bit. But usually it's uh, with, with a table of dependencies this size with only a few relationships, it's usually pretty straightforward for getting the rough shape like this. So the next step would be to redraw it, but with our nicer format and following our convention where we have activity in the top center, duration in the bottom middle. And then we're gonna fill out these values for early start, early finish, late start and late finish. So now we're going to do the forward pass and we're gonna start with the early start of all beginning activities or initial activities and they're all going to be zero. So for A, B and C, each of those will start at zero because they have nothing coming before them. After that, we just add the durations. So zero plus two is two, zero plus three is three and zero plus one is one. Then we take the early finish from the predecessor and we take that into the early start of the successor. So that is going to be a two here. Where we have more than one predecessor coming in, we're going to take the larger of the two values. So this would be three because three is larger than two. And down here, three is larger than one. There's two, uh, two predecessors leading into the successor. So we're going to pick three. Again, we'll add uh, the early start to the duration. So two plus two is four. Three plus four is seven and three plus one is four. Now when we look at activity G here, it has three predecessors. So we'll take the largest early finish of all of those. So we have four, seven, or four. Seven is going to be the largest one, so we'll bring it in. And seven plus three is 10. Down here, we only have one predecessor, so we just bring that value straight in. Four and four plus five gives us a nine. And here we have to bring in the largest of the two. So we have 10 or we have nine. So we're going to bring in the 10. We're gonna add the duration and we're gonna see that the early finish of this activity is 13. All right, so now we're gonna move into the backward pass. What we do is we take the early finish of the last activity and we bring that into the position for late finish. So we're gonna bring that 13 into there. And now we're basically going to do the opposite of the forward pass. We're gonna subtract the duration to get the late start. So 13 minus three will be 10. When there's only one successor, we're going to bring it straight in. So this 10 will come in here and the 10 will also come in here. We can subtract again the duration. So we'll have a seven there and 10 minus five is going to give us a five. Now where there's two successors competing for a position here, what we do is we do the opposite. So we're going to bring the smallest of the values in here. So we have a seven or we have a five in the late start position that we're gonna bring into the late finish of the predecessor. So we'll bring the five in. 
and five minus one is four. And actually we can carry this through here because activity C here only has uh, one successor, so we'll bring that four in. And four minus one is three, so we see it has a late start of three. Okay, uh, coming up to here, again, there's only one successor, so we're gonna bring that seven into both positions. Seven minus two is five, seven minus four is three. Now here for activity B, there's two successors, so we have to take the smaller of the values. We can take a three or we can take the four, so we have to take the three, three minus three is zero. And up here, we also have two successors, so we have to take the smaller of the late starts there, so we have five or three. We're gonna bring the smaller one, so we're gonna bring a three. Three minus two is one. And now we want to identify the critical path, and any activity that is critical actually has the early start and late start is the same value, or the early finish or late finish is the same value. So activity B here is certainly on the critical path. Here activity E is also because we have that three three and that seven seven. So this is starting to form our critical path. Up here at activity G, we also have this activity being critical. So we go from activity E to activity G, and then down here to I where we have those early starts and late starts, both 10 and the early finish and late finish, both 13. When you look around at the rest of the project, no other activity has that condition. So this is our critical path. It is B, E, G, I. So any activity that's on the critical path, if it is delayed at all, the whole project will be delayed. So if we delay any of these activities, B, E, G, or I, by even just one day, the whole entire project will finish a day later. Right now, um, as long as everything goes as planned, we expect the project to finish on the end of the 13th day. So that's the project duration is 13 days. But for the other activities that are not on the critical path, they have some slack or float, and uh, they can be delayed by a certain amount without delaying the project completion date. And in this case, where you have multiple starting activities, um, that's why we get the late starts here on activities A and C being non-zero values, because activity A can actually start one day late, and, uh, and it'll be okay, it won't delay the project. And same with activity C here, it could actually be delayed for three days um, and before it would start affecting the project duration. So when you're doing these network diagrams and you have multiple starts and you come back and you see some of them are not zeros for the late start, that's okay. At least one of them has to be a zero on the late start. And it is possible that more than one could be zero, but they don't all have to be zero. So yeah, hopefully that helps. I'll put up a link here as well to another similar video going over a network diagram uh, where we also solve for critical paths.